Hey, welcome back everybody. So today, um, I got a bunch of video that I shot quite a while ago. Oh my gosh. And I wanted to see what it was, what it would take to do a budget build. What's the least expensive build I could do and make a nice little street rod or hot rod motor. So um, I actually shot a lot of this video like four or five months ago, but uh, I just got done editing and put it together now. So check it out. I think you're gonna like this. All right guys, so I moved inside because I wanted to get away from that dyno out there. So anyway, this video in recent years, the core prices of the 350 Chevys, the small block Chevys has gone up, you know, significantly. And I thought, what's, I mean, how, what engine could I build that I could do on an extreme budget and still make a pretty cool uh, street rod, rat rod? That was kind of our goal. This engine is actually for a buddy of mine and he has this really cool rat rod. It's actually a fiberglass body car on a, a you know, a, a, like a light, s10 frame or something like that it's not a big frame it's a full frame car but it's a it's a smaller like mini truck frame but the car is super cool it's light and he wanted something that was gonna look and sound really cool but you know was gonna be as cheap as possible you know and he's he's looking at me kind of kind of started out like hey can you do something for me for free what do you have that you can give me i said well i don't really have anything i can give you but so we chose an engine for this that is a pretty, makes a pretty cool uh, little street rod engine. It's, it's definitely not like a real high horsepower deal or a ground pounder or something like that, but he doesn't really need that. He doesn't need something crazy. He just wants something that looks cool, sounds cool, and will move his rat, rat, rod, rat rod sorry, down the road. And I think we accomplished our mission. So. I have been wanting to make this video for a long time. So this is going to be uh, an experiment to see just how cheaply or inexpensively we can build a small block Chevy and still make it pretty cool. So um, I'm gonna cut to the video now, and this is stuff that we, we shot, geez, I think it was last September, September of 2018 when I shot all this stuff. And I'm just now getting around to editing it and getting it on. I've been super busy with a bunch of other builds, you know. So, but I sat down Saturday night and I just kind of edited this together, threw it together. So I hope you enjoy this. I think it's really cool. I think it's gonna be a great video. So here we go. Hey, welcome back everybody. Today on my channel, we're gonna build a budget small block Chevy. We wanna find out just exactly how cheaply we can build a really cool street rod engine. You're gonna love it. Okay guys, so this is our extreme budget project build. What this is, is this is a 305 Chevy. Now, here's what we've done. We, we paid uh, $50 for this engine. So we got $50 invested into it, and it was a complete long block core. Now, one of the nice things about some of these 305s is a lot of them are in really good shape because people pull them out with low mile, miles on them. This one here was sitting in a guy's garage for years. He pulled it out and replaced it with a 350, probably 15, 20 years ago, and the thing just sat. So when we took it apart, the block and everything was in steam condition. So here's what we did. Because I wanted to like put together a budget on this, what I did is I didn't do the cleaning or the machining on this myself. I took it to a, a, a buddy of mine, a local shop, and you know, I asked him what's the best price you could give it. So what he did is he vatted the block in the acid tank and he bored the cylinders to 30 thousandths over. He also um, cut the crank uh, 1010 undersized, so we had to pay for the machine work on that. Now on the cylinder heads, we spent a little bit of money, not too much, but what we did is we bought new valves for it and these heads are the 601 casting. It's, it's called the 305 HO head. So, um, 
It has a tighter chamber and it makes higher compression. Plus they have the bigger valve. It has a one inch 840 intake and a 1.5 exhaust. The non-HO305 heads have a 1.720 valve. They have a smaller intake. But you'll notice if you look at the surface of this, I don't know how well you can see that, but we did not mill the heads. The reason we didn't resurface the heads is because we didn't want to spend the money. We put a straight edge on the heads and they are as flat as a pancake. So we didn't do anything that we didn't need to do. We also didn't need to do any guide work on these because the guides were in pristine condition. We did buy new valve springs and hardened retainers and locks. We spent a little bit of money on that. We got a water pump and an oil filter from AutoZone. That is a $19 one-year warranty pump. And this is the, the oil filter that we paid like five bucks for. Now we come over here and this is our engine kit that we bought. So we bought the lowest co cost kit we could find. The one thing that's not in this kit is the cam and lifters because the cam and lifters was kind of expensive. It really boosted the price of this kit up. We paid $180 for this kit. And if you look around online, you can buy kits. Now, again, they're not high-end bearings. They're, they're the lower house brand type stuff. But again, we're on a budget here. We're trying to see how cheaply we can do this. So we got 175 bucks into the bearings. These are our pistons. It's just a stock cast dish piston, which goes really well with our closed chamber head. We got a set of rings to go with the pistons. We got our cam bearings. We got our block plugs. We got an oil pump and we got a new timing chain and gear set. And of course our gasket set. 175, 180 bucks into that. So I'm gonna tally this stuff up as we go. And we're gonna put this together and see how, how inexpensively we can put together a nice little rat rod engine. What we're gonna do on the camshaft is we're gonna look around on Craigslist maybe eBay or whatever, we're going to try to find a, a new flat tappet cam, but something that somebody has that they're not using, that they're selling. We put valve springs, what they call a Z28 spring on this head. Those springs, and I'll price out the valves and springs for you. I'm going to give you a rundown of what all this stuff costs. Uh, those springs are like a dollar a piece, but they'll handle a 500 lift cam. So what he wants is he wants a cam like 480 to 500. He wants a cam that has a lumpy idle. Now I know I've told you many times a cam needs to be matched to the car, but in this situation, he just wants a cam that has kind of a rough idle and sounds cool. He's not chasing power. It's basically, this is all for show. So let me walk you through how much we've spent so far. Hey guys, so this is our master list here. And again, I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep this list going as we progress through this build. But this is basically where we're at. If we look at what we've done so far, uh, we paid $50 for the engine itself. The engine kit was about 180. And if you look around, you can find that. Now again, it didn't have the cam and the lifters in that. We're still gonna have to add that to this list. The valves, the springs, and the retainers that we bought were about $110. We did invest some money into those. Now you don't have to buy new valves if you, you know, you could, you could always, you know, put the used valves back in if you really are on an extreme budget. We decided to spend a little money because they don't cost that much. Now on the heads, we actually didn't do a valve job. What we did is the seats were in really good shape. The, the 305s have a hardened exhaust seats from the factory. We didn't pay to have a valve job done. That's a lot of times you find that on these 305s, the head, the parts are in really good shape. They're not worn out because, you know, like I said, people pull them out and put them in the corner of their garage for 20 years. That's exactly what happened. You can find 305s like that if you look around. So we just lap, we hand lap the valves in. We didn't pay for any machine work on the head. Heads are, everything's in spec. We, we checked out the parts and they're, they're excellent. Um, we did uh, have some valves, new valve stem seals that we put on there, but those came out of our, our, our gasket set on our engine kit. So those were part of that 180 for the engine kit. Uh, we got a water pump and an oil filter at AutoZone for 30 bucks. The block cleaning and boring was $80. Now I know some shops, depending on what part of the country, you might spend more on that. Um, if you look around, there are shops that'll do this for you. And literally, we just, we stripped the thing ourselves. We pulled all the plugs and the cam bearings and everything out. And we took it down and said, 
put it in your acid tank for 24 hours and bore the cylinders. Don't do anything else to it. We, we, now you can have it Magnaflux. They'll usually Magnaflux it as part of that surface. We did it ourselves because I have a Magnafluxer. No cracks or anything. 305s rarely crack. And then of course, to grind the crank was $60. Now, it, you may be able to find a 305. Honestly, we could have just polished this crank and got away with it, we, but we just decided to grind it uh, because it, it wasn't that expensive. So, so far, we have $510 into this thing. But here's what I want you to get. Just think for a minute about all the stuff we talked about a little while ago. For $510, look what we've got. We've got pretty much everything we need to assemble this motor. <clears throat> and I'm going to look around later on today on Craigslist and stuff and see if I can find a, a decent cam. We want something that, you know, will just sound cool. We're not interested in big power. So hopefully we can find a cam and a set of lifters on Craigslist or eBay that's, that's pretty cheap that will go in here and, and work just fine. And if you'll notice one thing we did, like on the heads, this is one trick you can do. We haven't painted the block. The block's probably going to be red or something, whatever he wants it. But the, the heads, we painted them with aluminum colored paint. And we're going to touch those up some more. Now, obviously they're not aluminum heads, but you can buy that aluminum colored paint and it gives a good effect. I mean, if somebody comes up to the car and is looking right at it and goes, yeah, those are cast iron heads, you know. <clears throat> but from a distance or the car going down the road, if you're just looking for that effect, it actually looks like, very much like it has aluminum heads on it. Um, also, what's cool about this that I didn't mention is this engine had a dirty, nasty, grimy Edelbrock aluminum intake on it. It came with it for 50 bucks. So it's a used intake, and right now I don't have it here because I have it in the, the, the wash base and I'm cleaning it, but it's cleaning up real nice. So we're going to have a nice Edelbrock uh, dual plane aluminum intake on top of this thing that we got with it and also if you look in the corner right over there I'll try to zoom in on those that is the 305 exhaust manifolds that came off of this thing the other ones in there somewhere and we're gonna use those we're not even gonna spend money on headers we're just gonna it's a rat rod he's gonna put the exhaust manifolds that came off of it right back on it so we got those as part of the $50 deal too so so far it's working out good. He's also got a line on a used carburetor, a good used carburetor, that a guy wants to sell for like 75 bucks. And if we have to, we'll buy a $15 carb kit and put it, put it in there. So I hope you're looking forward to this. This is going to be definitely an extreme budget build. But, uh, you know, there's some of you out there that are on an extreme budget. So I hope you'll stay tuned. I'm not going to spend a ton of time walking you through the assembly of this motor. I've got a ton of other videos where I'm assembling engines. It's a small block Chevy. It's a, basically the same exact assembly process as a 350. Um, so also, oh, I didn't mention the connecting rods. So the connecting rods that were in this engine, the connecting rods um, on, my, on the press over there, we just pressed the pins out and got rid of them. And we torqued up the caps here and we measured the bores and the bores are perfect on these rods. The rods are flawless. So we're going to go ahead and also, and that's part of the $50 for the engine. Now, one of the things that we'll add into the budget is having the piston pressed onto the rods. I'm going to have that done at my buddy's shop because we want to pay for it. We want to see how much we could, we could do this. Um, it really does help if you have friends that have a machine shop. If you don't have friends in the machine shop business, Find a local shop somewhere, a mom and pop type shop, and make friends with them because they will really help you out. Um, I have my own machine shop, but like I said, for this build, I'm farming it all out to another shop because I want to be as realistic as possible as far as how inexpensively we could actually do this. So I hope you're jazzed for this. And for those of you, you know, I hope I inspire you to. You know, if you if you you have a little street rod or a rat rod or something, but you don't have a lot of money, which a lot of us don't, hopefully this will inspire you. Yeah, just put something together, man. I mean, um, it's not that hard to do, and if you have a little bit of money, you can do it. Hey, welcome back, guys. So, <clears throat> little update on the 305 Extreme Budget Build. So I found a cam on Craigslist. Now it is a flat tappet cam. 
It's a Howard's cam, and it was something that some guy had on the shelf, and he just decided to, to sell it because it was for a project that he did, and it never panned out. But anyway, it's about a it's about a 490 lift cam, and which is great for the Z28 Springs. They'll hold up to 500 lifts, so it fits the bill. It's going to go along with our heads. And also it has a 236, 242 duration at 50 with um, 108 degree lobe separation. For those of you that don't really understand what all that is, that translates into <clears throat> a lumpy idle. This thing is going to sound cool. So now get this, we paid 50 bucks for the cam and lifters. We got a set of brand new Howard's lifters. And if you know anything about Howard's, or if you want to know about them, I can tell you right now, these are great camshafts. They make really good quality lifters and cams. So you may have to look around to find a deal like this. You know, we just scoured. It took me about, <clears throat> oh, I don't know, a week to find this, but I just kept scouring Craigslist. And again, I'm on a budget, so 50 bucks for cam and lifters. Uh, another thing we did is I had, um, I. I had the cam bearings put in the block. I didn't do it myself. Like I said, I had my buddy Chris do it because I wanted to pay it for it. He charged us $30 for the cam bearing installation. And I don't know if you can see it, but the block, I've got it up on the stand. It is final washed and it is very close to being ready to put together. So actually, I'm going to real quickly walk you through the, I'm not going to film the whole thing. I'll just like give you short clips of what I'm doing as I assemble this. So the first thing I'm going to do is put the cam in and then I'm going to get the crank installed. Uh, also final washed the crankshaft with soap and water. Uh, I checked the clearances off camera. Everything looks good. And so we are going to start assembling our extreme budget build 305. First order of business is to install a cam. And it's always a good idea to put assembly lube on this. Coat that gear with a good amount of assembly lube and make sure you get some good assembly lube on each one of these lobes here. Our cam is installed and I'm just holding on to the little dowel pin up here and it turns really nice so that's great. Alright, next thing is we'll get the crankshaft in this turkey. So make sure you get the rear main seal in facing the right way here guys. The lip faces the oil and then on the back of this thing you always want to put right here where the cap mates with the block Put some good uh, RTV or silicone there. This will, this will keep this thing from leaking. And then also, make sure you put a good, a thick assembly lube on that. Make sure that seal is lube. Now keep in mind, that might look the same, but that's silicone sealer here. On the seal itself, don't put sealer on that. That is assembly lube. We got our bearings in, and we got engine oil on the bearing. And now, we're going to very gently lay our crankshaft in there. Now. The crankshaft, we, we had it cleaned by the machine shop and we took a rifle brush in these holes in the solvent tank and cleaned the rifle brushes out. One of the things I would caution you guys and something that I see on budget builds a lot is, is uh, people compromise on cleaning. They got a dirty, nasty engine and they say, well, we want to avoid the machine shop as much as possible. And there's nothing wrong with doing as much of the work as you can but one of the things that you don't want to skimp on when you're doing this is cleaning have the machine shop vat and clean everything because dirt or grime or grit is your engines number one enemy and it doesn't matter how much money you save if a thing is full of grime and dirt and the oil galleries aren't clean your engine's going to have a real short life so when i say hey let's do an extreme budget build we want to we want something that's going to last, right? So we did a few reliability things like making sure everything is spotlessly clean, making sure that we put new valves in the head and so forth. Spent a little money on that stuff because those are critical areas that you know are, are going to cause longevity problems with the engine. So cleaning is just absolutely important. Go ahead and spend the money and have a machine shop vat and clean an acid uh, bath or bake or whatever they have to do to get these parts spotlessly clean and then you need to final wash everything with soap and water. I've talked to you a lot about that before. Alright, so we got our crankshaft in. 
Now we're going to put our caps on and we can start with our piston and rod assemblies. All right, cranks installed, caps are all torqued, no issues. I checked the end play, we've got about six thousandths crankshaft end play, so we're good on that. Next thing, pistons. Guys, so we got the short block together. I didn't film any of the piston installation because I've done that a hundred times. I got all, you guys have all seen that so many times. It's got to be getting old by now. But yeah, it went together pretty good with the parts that we had discussed earlier. Um, Man, I'm not used to this little tiny dinky bore, but I mean, it is what it is. Uh, it's turned out really good. I got uh, put the new timing chain and gear set on, and of course, make sure that they're dot to dot on this one. We're not going to degree the cam on this thing. We're just going to go dot to dot and call it good. So yeah, the, the short block turned out really good. Got everything forked on the lower end turns over real nice. I just put these four studs in here because I just happened to have them laying around. These are ARP studs that were left over from, I don't even know what they were left over from, but um, the, the point is you use what you have. Um, you know, if you don't have them, use head, just use head bolts. The rest of these we're going to put head bolts in. But now that we've got uh, the, the bottom end together, uh, we can go ahead and put our heads on. I don't have the oil pan or the oil pump or any of that stuff on yet, but that's okay because I can I can do that after I get the heads on. So I want to put these heads on and first of all we're going to put our gaskets on the block. And these help to guide the heads on and there's also dowel pins in here and it also helps to hold the gasket in place. Now they do say up on this side so obviously they are directional. They want you to put these in it. They don't want you to put them on like that. They want the upside facing up. We'll just get it onto our dowel pins here. And then install the heads. It's as simple as that. So I think I mentioned before that these are just factory 305 heads. But I painted them with that aluminum color paint because I want, kind of wanted to have that effect. It's not an aluminum head, but since this is a rat rod, appearances are kind of something that we're trying to go after. So if you look at that from a distance, it actually looks pretty good. It looks kind of like it's an aluminum head. You know, when we add a, a trick-looking valve cover on there, that thing looks pretty good. I mean, especially for the budget we're on. Guys, so... I got both heads on. Now check this out. I told you this thing had an old, dirty, nasty Edelbrock intake on it. We cleaned it up and it looks pretty decent. Okay guys, so um, I left a bunch of stuff out obviously, but here it is. It's uh, Let me just give you a little update on what I did uh, since the last segment. I got the heads torqued on, I put the, the, the lifters in, got the valve train, uh, push rods, rocker arms, everything put in, adjusted the valves. I purchased a harmonic balancer, a dampener, a new one, and put that on, and I put that into the price. Now, this is my carburetor that goes with the run stand, so that's not included in the price, and these are also a set of run stand valve covers that I put on here just to run this thing. He's got his own carburetor and valve covers. I also got the break-in oil, but I, I didn't, I don't consider the break-in oil to be part of the rebuild, so I didn't put that in there. Uh, you got to have oil no matter what. Let me show you what we did here. We, we're pretty much done with this thing. The last thing to do is put it in the run stand and run it. So. I've got a list here of what we did, so we'll go back over this. The first thing is we got the engine core for $50. The engine kit was $180. Valves, the springs, and the retainers uh, set us back about $110. The water pump and the oil filter was $30 from AutoZone. The block cleaning and boring was $80. And the crank grind was $60. $30, I paid Chris $30 to install the cam bearings, press fit pistons or semi-floating pistons, so I paid him to put the pistons and rods together, then the harmonic balancer, which was $60, and that's, that's really it. So, 
we pretty much got this done and I have a grand total here and I think you're going to be surprised. Now keep in mind that you could probably go buy a used engine from a wrecking yard or something like that or, or, or from you know out of a wreck or whatever I don't know four or five hundred bucks or something cheaper but the thing is that's really not what this video is about we actually rebuilt this engine we we bored the cylinders and and put new internal parts in it all that stuff that came in the kit the oil pump cam the lifters we got new pistons new rings new bearings new gaskets this is a rebuilt engine and our grand total after all of that is six hundred and ninety eight dollars that's all we've got into this thing i am very happy because i think the thing looks really cool and i can tell you this it's going to sound really cool so if you're on a budget you can actually do this pretty cheap nobody knows that this thing only has like 200 horsepower right it's going to sound like it has 400 because of the cam and the exhaust that we're going to put on it plus um, I mean, it looks like it has aluminum heads on it, even though it doesn't. It looks like a really nice new aluminum performer intake, even though it's used. We just cleaned it up, right? And we hit it with that aluminum paint. So I'm very happy with the way this turned out. Um, and the only thing left to do now, after all that, is make some noise. six hundred and ninety eight dollars I hope you enjoyed the video stay tuned for more ask any questions you have below and I will talk to you very soon I promise